A massacre takes place in this city every day. A bomb explodes. A dismembered hand is thrown into someone's garden as a forewarning. Nobody feels safe anymore. Whilst heroin dealers work openly on street corners and murderers shoot in broad daylight, policemen remain unwilling to apprehend them. At least four very different wars are being conducted between Sunnites and Shiites, between drug cartels, between political parties, as well as between ordinary criminals and the police. Tiziano Terzani wrote these words about Karachi in 1995. Little has since changed, except that this port city with its 18 million inhabitants is now Pakistan's biggest trade and population center. What is life like in Karachi for a small Christian community in St. Philip's Parish? According to a recent newspaper report, was more than two million illegal immigrants in Karachi. That's a very big number. It has an impact on the overall population. It has an impact on many other things, uh, on the crime situation, uh, on, on, on drugs, on smuggling. In this city, those who sell drugs, it is already understood that they are also from the tax mafia and also involved in political acts, and everyone is involved in it. Here in our own area, many religious groups have also adopted the same process. They have their own terrorist wings. According to secret assumptions, there are almost 56 terrorists in Karachi who are target killers. You just show them the picture, and in the evening, you receive the dead body. Daily, 10 to 15 dead bodies. And the biggest dilemma in Karachi is, when a person is killed or murdered, after 10 minutes, the police and the people move around as if nobody has been killed or nothing has happened there. No human person had died. At this moment, the police do not have any kind of role in the city. The wave of terrorism in Karachi has become worse in the last 10 years. Target killings are mainly the result of political parties, big business, drug gangs and fundamentalist religious groups settling scores. The reality on Karachi's streets also includes unpredictable bomb explosions that kill and maim many innocent people. The growing violence, though not directed against Christians, inevitably affects them. During five months of 2012, five boys were shot in Nisanagri, one of Karachi's poor, mainly Christian neighborhoods. One of the victims was Faisal, a young man under 25 who ran a small mobile phone accessory shop near his home. He was sitting in his shop. Two thieves came in and they started looting the shop. They had a gun with them. I suddenly came there. They also pointed the gun at me. Then I jumped on one of them and held him. But he fired on my son. The one who had taken the money ran away. The one who opened fire on my son, we caught him. We immediately went to hospital, but they had shot my son dead. When I heard the firing, I ran down. Faisal was dead. He did not make any sound. I went and took him in my lap. He was a very loyal child. He was very intelligent and he was very capable. He made a very big sacrifice for both of us. He went to the seminary to become a priest, but he realized that neither his mother nor his father would run the household. So he came back from Lahore and took responsibility for everything. I have a small shop with recycled things. I just open it for two to four hours. Then I get tired because I'm a diabetic patient. And he came back because of my condition. 
He used to live with us. He was a big support for us. I cannot tell. I don't have the words. I can't live without my son. Sanagri, you mentioned it's a very large, I think what you would call it a slum or let us say a, a large number of poor people living in a certain part of the city. The city has grown. So there are land grabbers who are interested in this area. There are drug pushers who come around selling drugs. There's the problem of illegal sale of alcohol. There are money lenders who prey on the poor, who need money. They lend them money at very high rates, which then becomes difficult for the poor man to pay back. Most of our Christians are mostly economically, socio-economically, on the lower level of society. The streets are very small and narrow. People live in small houses. They cannot even breathe properly. They cannot have hygiene and good food. Most of the people are sick. Some have cardiac problems, others have tuberculosis, and many are suffering from other kinds of diseases. Usually, these people work as cleaners, sanitary workers, some are government employees, some are teachers, but all of these people are underpaid. Their salaries are very low. Because they live under stress and pressure, many poor people have now become addicts. Some use heroin, some drink alcohol, and some take opium. Some people turn to these local ways of addiction as a way of getting rid of their difficulties and worries. Issa Nagri's poor inhabitants decided to defend themselves against the drug mafia racketeering, extortion and growing violence. They chose to build a wall to limit traffic through the narrow streets and to control all who wish to enter this Christian enclave. This is the area where all this conflict started. And due to that, we had to build these walls. This was the shop where the incident took place. Those seven people who were killed by the terrorists. After that, we built these walls. They were built due to these martyrs. We all live in one community, and we have built these walls to protect ourselves. We hope that there will be no more such incidents for as long as these walls stand. People are together and are in favor. People are with us. The Catholic Church is with us. Are there any Muslims inside these walls? There are Muslims inside these walls. They were also not safe and secure. We ourselves are there for their protection. We have also built another special door, because five Muslim families live here. They have to go for their prayer. 
they have to send their children to madrasas, and they use it for wedding ceremonies, for their feast days, or in the case of a funeral, when they have to take out the dead body. They are our brothers and sisters, so we will live with them as we live with our own families. Good relations with Muslim neighbors was for many years the norm in Pakistan. Christians are no newcomers to this part of the world, originating from the very same ethnic groups as Pakistan's other inhabitants. Though they are only a 2% religious minority group next to Hindus, Sikhs, as well as the Muslim Shiite minority. The Taliban are responsible for a lot of destruction in Pakistan, especially in Karachi. And we can't get rid of the Taliban, because if they can harm Muslims, then they will also harm Christians or Hindus or other minorities, because they are an easy target for them. For this reason we have to arrange the security, because there is the possibility of attacks on our churches, and this happens. Sometimes we receive threatening phone calls. We know all about your program and we can attack it. When I was a student, I had good relations with my Muslim friends. We used to hang out together and had fun. We used to enjoy school and then college life. But now, maybe with the passage of time, people's attitudes will change. Presently, people have become more fanatical, especially with regards to their faith. To be a Christian is a big thing, but it is terrible for Christians to live in Karachi, and now it has become even more terrible. I have been threatened again and again. They say, change your religion into our religion. I have received many threats. I tell other people, but nobody believes my words. No one listens to us. If we go to a police station, they say to us, when we catch the culprit, we will then do something and your loss will be diminished. But we are not listened to. They listen to their own people, to Muslims. Nobody listens to Christians. In all matters, they put pressure on our people, on Christians. Many nations live together in Pakistan, but amongst these there are some extremist elements that spread terrorism. They try to do bad things to our people. And due to this, it seems that the whole of Pakistan is affected and the whole country has to live with violence. But it's not that bad. I cannot say that there is no terrorism. But on the other hand, I also cannot say that everyone is a terrorist. We are facing difficulties due to a couple of people, not only we Christians, but also other minorities which are living here face these problems. But it is true that, compared to others, Christians face more problems as regards job opportunities, business, education. It is not so common for Christians to be targeted. The common Muslims have good relations with Christians. But there are a couple of Muslims who are powerful in this country, are called extremists, and they hate Christians. 
They do not consider us Pakistanis. Rather, they identify us with America. When there is a drone attack, they burn our Bible, they burn the cross. Now, for example, there is a conflict over a blasphemous movie. Mr. Johnson's family also became a victim of violence when four masked men armed with pistols, knives and clubs broke into their home in the middle of the night and robbed them of all their valuable belongings. The family experienced a moment of fear. Thankfully, nobody was killed. Mr. Johnson recognized the attackers. They worked as security guards in the family's milk shop. There were two watchmen, Pathans. I used to ask them to stay near to our home and vigil when the van with milk comes at 4 a.m. We trusted them a lot. Whenever it was their Aid or other event, we used to give them extra money. And I took care of them in a special manner. We really cared for them. So the thieves were those watchmen. After that incident, for a long time now, these incidents of robbery are taking place in Isanagri. My father is a policeman. Everybody knows that this job is, you know, very critical. It is very dangerous for the person. My mother is also scared. My grandmother is also scared. My sisters, my all siblings, you know. I think my father is the best father in the entire world. Because if I would be asking for the life of him, so he will give me his life also. And I pray to God that he may keep in my father in his shadow and he blessed him a lot and my prayers are always with my father. I love him a lot. I cannot go alone anywhere. In Pakistan, women don't have a lot of freedom. They cannot go outside after 11 p.m. They're very dangerous. They were raped or they were killed or they were kidnapped. I studied in St. Joseph's College, which is only for women, and it is in Karachi only. And um, I just uh, completed my intermediate, so I've uh, cleared in all my exams, and now I'm waiting for the mark sheet. Girls should be educated. If boys are getting knowledge, they are achieving anything for the future, for their betterment life. So I think girls have to study a lot. They have to struggle a lot. I would like to be a lawyer because I like the personality of lawyer. They wear a gown and with a hat and the registers in their hand. So, but my father wants to see me as a professor and he struggled for me a lot. But if I would be a lawyer, so I would help the women first. There are uh, many uh, Christians and Muslims too in our college. And even Hindus are there. I have a good relation with everybody, with Christians and Muslims too. And uh, we spend a lot of time together. We eat together, we uh, dance together, and we do a lot of fun. Not unlike the majority of Catholic parishes, St. Philip's Parish also runs six schools. The majority of pupils are Christian, too poor to study in good schools, though there is no shortage of Muslims who also want their children to be taught in Catholic schools. Most of the Muslim parents who send their children to Christian schools, especially to Catholic schools, do so for them to get the discipline and a quality education. Muslims who are well educated have good relations with Christians. At St. Philip's school at morning assembly, half the students are Christian and half Muslim. 
and there is a very good atmosphere between the students from both religions. Very often, our Christian students cannot even get admitted into big Catholic schools. It is for this reason that we started our St. Philip School. In some of our primary schools, the majority of Christian students do not pay their school fees, and due to this we cannot pay salaries to our teachers on time. If we have a poor Christian area, like a slum area, it will be difficult for the illiterate parents who are daily wage earners, who have to work themselves, to send the children to school. They will have many excuses. They will say the school is far away. They will say it costs us money to send the children to school. So this is where we try to bring education to the people. No one goes to school among you? I go. We are observing who are the brats in the street, and they do not go to school. We go, but today uniform was unwashed. Uniform is unwashed, and your teeth, very dirty. I feel that they can change, they can develop. If they make a small effort, they will succeed. This is my belief. I think that young people need to work hard so that they can develop themselves and move forward in their lives. And I hope that the young people have the desire to become something and that they want to move forward. The belief that the difficult situation that Christian families living in Isanagri face can change ensures that in spite of an uncertain tomorrow and the growing violence, they do not intend leaving this city of fear as Karachi is sometimes called. St. Philip's community is growing and developing as the construction of the first church nears completion, so it becomes an ever more important symbol of unity for this sprawling parish. In our parish, there are 20,000 people and 16 chapels, small chapels. In several places, we do not have a church, and so we use the church of other denominations, and we celebrate our Mass in their place of worship. We are two priests working in this parish. One is Father Victor John, and the other is me. As regards to population, this is the second biggest parish in Karachi. The parish church is coming into, into existence after uh, 40 years of the existence of the parish. So this is a, a very, very historical event uh, when this church will be blessed and people of this parish will come together as one community. I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, to the to the donors, uh, it's a great help uh, given to us. But at the same time, uh, these people, according to their abilities, according to their uh, financial situation, and in, in Pakistan, they they are also contributing. So uh, we are we are lucky. The church in need is helping us out. Now, about 80 percent of our work is complete, and the other 20. Uh, work will be completed in two months' time. Mm -hmm. 
We Christians, we are optimists and we hope that the fate of Pakistan and the fate of Karachi will change. So, as our parish is in a central part of Karachi, our parish will also make progress. We are working on education, we are working on the faith formation of the people, and we are also working for social improvements for the people. I see that whatever is happening to them, poverty, sickness, that even then their faith remains very strong. I'm convinced of it. I'm impressed with their faith. And I pray that with God's will they will go ahead and live a good life. To be a Christian is something very big. It is a big thing to be able to say the name of Christ. We are born Christians and we want to live as Christians. I feel proud that I'm a Christian. To be a Christian means to be like Christ. So, to be a Christian in this country is an honor for me. And I wish to become a good Christian like Christ. This is our teaching to forgive others. Christ forgives others on the cross. Those who crucified him, he forgave them. I feel that to be a Christian is to bring people a message of love. Moreover, God is love. <laughs>